Hey there everyone, good morning to all of you. My name is Rabbit and thank you so much for joining me for episode number 49 of Let's Play Brave Fencer Musashi. In our last episode, quite a few things did take place, but to just quickly run through the laundry list because I do have some info to share with you regarding what I did between our previous episode and this one. So as for the specifics of the recap, we ended up finding the next Crest Guardian, which was, I think it was a queen ant, right? For some reason I wanted to say queen bee, but it was a gigantic ant that was in fact the source of the ant that had come here into town and was fucking with shit. I really don't know why the ants got let loose, but for whatever reason, they got out and started wreaking havoc, but no longer because we killed the queen. So after taking care of that and liberating the wind crest, we were blown back to the forest that's right outside of Grillin Village. I don't think specifically that section is the somnolent forest, but either way, we met up with John who handed over a note to us after he had done some research regarding the whereabouts of the final scroll, which is known as the sky scroll. So we do have the note. We'll be sure to take a look at it at some point here at the start of this episode, but after we met up with John, got our clue to acquiring the last scroll, we went back to the castle to talk to the three people that we had let free in the ants infested mine. And we did confirm that we did it. We have freed everyone who was imprisoned by one of the Bincho fields. So the castle is now happening. It is popping. We got the last musician. We met up with a chef who created something called Neat Balls that you can now buy at Hilda's shop. Not super important, to be honest. I still think the cheese is superior, but I digress. And then the final person we spoke with was Knight Ramparoni, who taught us the final technique that is available in the game called Ramparoni SP. I showcased it at the end of episode episode 48 where basically you double jump tap the triangle button and you do like a little lunge dive glide kind of thing with your two swords in hand so very exciting stuff but what had happened without you guys so right as we were parting ways I told you I was curious why we were still getting a question mark for one of the the toys or action figures here in series four. Well, I did run all the way back through the meandering forest to the frozen palace, and I was correct in thinking that, what do you know, that little stupid golem thing can actually be assimilated. And he gives you, oh God, I think it's called steel or metal man. And basically it gives you the ability to run over those spikes. Now, if you guys recall, I had deliberated for so long, like how do I get past this? I used so many different techniques, so many of the scrolls to try to figure out how I could knock them down or walk on top of them or absorb the spikes themselves. And there was no way to get past that. If you had followed that path, so if I had correctly assimilated this monster back when we were first navigating through the frozen palace we could have run back through the spikes and all the way through to access that ledge where there was another bencho field i don't remember who was in it that honestly doesn't fucking matter but I got to tell you guys, and I really do think that just to preface my upcoming statement, this is a sign of very good game design that I'm pretty sure the developers probably intended for you to assimilate the ability, run through the spikes to access that that upper balcony and that hidden it's not really hidden, but that bencho field with the person inside. But instead, what I had done, just because I am pretty interactive and I like to jump around a lot, and that's just how I like to play games, I had just jumped off the top of the very, very uppermost like railing, and I jumped onto that balcony, and that was how I had accessed that bencho field to free that person that was in prison there. So I don't know if it was intended for you to be able to stand on that upper part or, or that upper level and then jump onto the balcony or if I basically clip the screen somehow or clipped like an invisible field. Don't really know, but I'm assuming that maybe the developers felt like, hey, if you're creative or weird enough like Rabbit to where you're wanting to jump around and experiment or you're too slow to figure out to attempt assimilating different monsters, there you go. Like here is option number two. So I just, I really wanted to take a second to highlight that, that I think that is exceptional game design or in a sense, it's the developers doing a really good job of rewarding your creativity or rewarding your willingness to explore and try new things. And I know 
there were some people even after that episode had gone live that had said to me like, I did not even know you could do that. I always just access that Bincho field by assimilating the ability. So there you go, you guys. Maybe I'm teaching you some new things by my own <laughs> my own inability to just follow the rules outlined by the game. But anyway, I will show you guys a clip probably already went through on the screen while I was talking about all of that, but we will not hold up gameplay for this episode any longer. So I share all of that just to come back full circle and say, my hypothesis was correct, that that was the action figure we were missing. So it is called the S Golem. It is worth $650. And the description that accompanies this action figure says, it is intensely explosive, superb falling action, one copycat included. So there we go. We are now caught up. We have every single action figure for each respective series that has been accessible so far. So I'm not sure what will be in the special series. We've got filet, so. I don't know, maybe because we already have Capricola, Ed and Ben, Topo. Yeah, I don't know who will be left. Maybe like John and Leno might be one. Maybe some of the other townsfolk, maybe Ribson. Don't really know, you guys. But anyway, we need to kickstart the events of this episode by taking a look at the note John gave us and trying to determine what needs to happen next? So the note says, Pillar of wind, day of the sky, tears of God fall on the forest, prodigious tree. So I'm already thinking pillar of wind, it's going to probably be one of the wind crests that we will interact with. Day of the sky is probably sky day, which I think is this world's version of Friday. I still think that's very creative and I like that. Tears of God fall on the forest. Don't know if that's alluding to rain, maybe. So perhaps we'll go somewhere where there is a lot of rainfall. I don't think yet we've interacted with an area where there's been rain, or at least it's not coming to mind right now as I'm talking in the moment so i don't know and then prodigious tree don't know those last two hints uh, a little questionable a little up in the air but i think we'll be able to figure it out after we try talking to some people so let's do just that i guess we could have talked to kurt to see if he had any info to share with us uh i don't know we'll start with hilda actually and Hotello, and then maybe the kiddos. I really don't know like how we're gonna find the hints that we need to go where we next need to be, but let's just get started. What's wrong, says Hilda? You look down. When you're feeling low, the best thing to do is exercise. That is not helpful at all, <laughs> at all. But honestly, you guys, I feel like we've looked everywhere. We've interacted with everything, so yeah. who knows? So I think I saw Chappie a little while ago, but I'm not sure. Oh, Chappie's what he was calling Leno. Long time no see. So Mint has to say, Tim said he saw Chappie. Isn't he lucky? I wanted to see him too. Wow, you guys are not helping me out at all. I need some useful hints here, but I guess maybe it's my bad for expecting yeah, the kids yeah. to want? give me some good insider information. So Connors says, there is a meaning for everything in this world. You, me, and even this teacup. Okay, maybe the point of him saying that is just to offer that sometimes you got to read between the lines. There's a point to everything, meaning behind everything. I don't know, Hotello. Maybe he is something. We can also talk to the mayor and perhaps he will have Make yourself at home. the info we'll need. We also, if we run out of ideas, can go back to the library in the castle and see what is offered in terms of information there. Anyway, he says, Musashi, is it true that you were trying to rescue the princess all this time? Why didn't you tell me? What? Why would I tell you that? And why does it matter? I am not sure what Otello is getting at, but... Oh, 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 also, friends, we could go to the restaurant slash bar and try talking with Wanda, and she might have information. So change my mind. I could never change my mind when it comes to seeing you, Kurt. Never, ever. Not that I care much about making a profit, but lately my business has been getting on the right track. Oh, after all of the shady events with the assumed princess. I'm glad to hear things are working out for you, Kurt. Okay, after jam, that is it in terms of the shopkeepers that we can talk to. We'll hit up the mayor after jam here. Welcome. May I help you? So her information says, what's wrong? You look puzzled today. It's not like you. So basically nothing. She has nothing to say. Do you even upgrade what you've got to sell? Because I feel like you've had bullshit the whole time. Like just, just stuff that 
restores BP. I feel her shop is maybe the most useless in this game. Just why? It would have been more valuable, I think, if food actually was required to sustain Musashi. Anyway, Mrs. Land says, Mrs. Grange, did you hear? The gondola office was attacked by a large ant. Oh, dear me, a large ant? My husband told me that a mutant ant came out of its nest to eat the pea soup and syrup that was going to be delivered to the castle. Oh, how disgusting. And is your husband okay? Yes, he was, because that little boy Musashi killed it. That's amazing, and for such a tiny boy, do you think he could be the reincarnation of Brave Fencer Musashi? Ha ha ha, you must be kidding. Dear, he couldn't be. You're right, what was I thinking? Ha ha ha. You hoes, I will kill both of you. And not even think twice about it. But whatever, we're not going to sweat the small stuff. We've got more important things to take care of than worrying about these two gossips. So, Mayor, please tell me you have something. I was worried about you. Everything all right? No, I need to know what needs to happen next. You don't look well, Musashi. When you're not feeling well, you should get some rest. Don't overdo it, Musashi. Is that a hint that I need to go sleep at the castle? You guys, I'm not too sure. What does it want from me? I don't even know who this is. Oh, Farmer Lactor. Hello there, young man. My wife thinks that you're our grandson, Bob. Here, she wanted me to give this to you. What? Musashi received a Kajiro action figure. You may play with it in your room. What? Thanks. Where's Mrs. Lactor? I want to thank her. Well, actually, er, uh, I'll thank her for you. Please take good care of that toy. What do you mean? You guys, did she pass away? What? Did she pass away? That Lactor, why did he abandon his field like this? I wonder if something happened. That makes me really sad. I hope that she didn't die. It's been a while. <laughs> Farmer Grange. I can't wait to get my hands on a giant action figure. Oh yeah, we we had heard that he's crazy about action figures. All right, y'all. I genuinely don't have a clue where we need to go or who we need to talk to. So Farmer McRice says it rains every morning on... Oh... Here we go. I knew if we talked to enough people, we'd get the info we needed. It rains every morning on Sky Day in Steamwood Forest. I wonder why it rains only on Sky Day and only in the morning. Mysterious, huh? Oh, shit. But Sky Day is this world's version of fucking Friday, and it's Saturday. So we basically have to wait an entire week. <gasps> oh, that's bullshit. But oh my god, we got... A Kajiro action figure. But Mrs. Lactor died. Did she leave this for us? Hey, where are you going, asshat? Hello again. I guess he's not going to really have much to say. That makes me quite sad. Oh, my goodness. Well, anyway, we'll try not to dwell on it. Maybe she's okay, and maybe he'll tell us more later. I don't know. But breaks my heart either way. What a sweet old lady. I'm glad she gave us that toy. Well, friends, what this basically means is... Oh my gosh, y'all. This is going to be a bit obnoxious, but I think my interpretation was correct. Some sort of a pillar of wind. So I think we're either going to find a crest that's going to take us to maybe the, the sky scroll because we saw last time when we interacted with the... Wind crashed like a little tornado, kind of lifted us up, and that was when it had dropped us in some extension of of the somnolent force, and we had interacted with John. But anyway, so I think that's what the first piece of the note means. Second piece, like I had correctly interpreted it's going to be on sky day and the tears of god like i guessed as well gonna be rain and i'm not sure if a tree is gonna grow or if there will be a tree where we need to go but steamwood forest i can't think of a place in steamwood where there was a tree or where there was an area we hadn't yet interacted with but i mean we can just run back through look around oh that's not true there was a crest we had found ages and ages and ages ago. <gasps> Y'all, it's all coming back to me. So I think, why don't we, oh shit, I am going in the very, very wrong direction. We don't have too much time left in this episode. I mean, technically we could have another 
five to 10 minutes if we really wanted to, but I feel bad because there's not much we really can do outside of maybe going back and spending some time looking through our action figures, but I feel there's still more action figures for us to access, but maybe you can't get them until the post game, and I say post game again in air quotes because I don't think there's more story for you to interact with so much as there is just the ability for you to freely run around. Wait, is it this one? I think this might be it. We never came back and interacted with this, did we? I don't know. Let me see. Like, we can climb this. We had seen this forever ago, like within the first 10, 15 episodes, and I never did anything with this one. But I think it's the Earth Crest. So stand up on the crest and use the Earth Scroll. So I wonder if we interact with this, it'll make that platform drop. Well, let's just do it right now while we have the opportunity. Ooh, and I like that it gets illuminated when you have the right scroll basically equipped. So we will do this. Is it gonna make the ledge drop? Oh yeah, baby. Oh yes. This is wild. I'm impressed. I, I gotta give it to the game. I love how you see so many things very early on into the narrative and it's in a sense kind of up to you to piece together clues and to make mental notes of what you've seen and oh another minku and here it is here is the other crest that we need to interact with that's fantastic so what we will do is end the episode by grabbing the minku and i guess what i'll do is i am just gonna spend a lot of time sleeping at the inn and when it is sky day, maybe early in the morning, I will come back here, wait for it to start raining, and we'll just get going. Or you know what we honestly could do? Episode 50 could be devoted to the toys that we have so far. And if we get any extra ones, we'll just weave that into whatever videos we can. Because I don't want to wait too much longer to look at them, and then we kind of miss that opportunity to have a a toy showcase or an action figure showcase. So let's do that. God, these minkus really just drive me nuts. Come here, you piece of shit. Give me what I'm looking for. So we received another longevity berry. You guys know the drill. Our max HP increased by 25 and our shit is restored. So that is it from me, folks. I already gave you the lowdown. What we will do is we will just meet up in video 50 back in Musashi's room, we'll take a look at every single action figure that we have thus far. And I'm assuming that'll take at least 15 minutes to get through all five series worth of figures. And then I'm guessing Kajiro is going to be one of the special ones. So we'll have two specials and then everything in the other ones. And as we just uncover more action figures, I'll just make a mental note to try to show them to you in the episode that we acquire them or shortly thereafter. So thank you very much again for watching, folks. My name is Rabbit. This is our semi-blind run through Brave Fencer Musashi. And I am quite happy to have you guys experiencing this game with me. So as always, please take very good care of your Yourselves. Be good, and I'll see you shortly in episode number 50 at the castle. Be right back, everyone.